I had a bit of an awkward experience with the Pokemon store today. So I actually did something different, special, uh, I would say. I went ahead and set up a bespoke store in my front yard and allowed some child collectors to go through my singles and, and pick out some... Uh, they got some great cards. They got an Arceus V-Star. They got Charizard V from the UPC. They've got, oh, um, a Radiant Charizard from Crown Zenith. And yeah, it was, they did excellent. Great choices, you know, masterful uh, taste in Pokemon, these uh, seven and eight year olds. But the dad, so the dad is, it's great dads. If you're out there buying for Pokemon for your kids, it's great. Slippery slope, you, you get into it yourself, but the dad, I don't think he understood the allure of collecting Pokemon cards. Um, he started off and was sort of like, thank you so much for doing this. And I was, yeah, no problem. So I'm there with a smile on my face, you know, the kids are looking through the cards and he's like, I don't understand why people buy this. I'm like, okay, your, your kids are there, but I don't understand why people buy this. Why are the cards worth different amounts of money? So I went into, well, there's different rarities. Uh, people who play the game, sometimes a card is really needed for your deck and you need a couple of them. So they're harder to find, they're more expensive. Explaining that. And I just got the, and I'm sure if you're a collector and you're an adult, you've got that look, you know, look down the nose and this, this idea that, you're an adult. Why are you collecting shiny cardboard? And I got that from this dad. It's like, uh, so many people must face this where they're really excited. They have fun doing something. Pokemon card collecting is active entertainment. It's going through cards. It's seeing different cards. It's seeing the card again. It's reading the card. It's trading the card. It's communicating others about cards. It's playing with the cards. And some adults, they don't get it. And I feel bad. I mean, I'm like an old guy. So I, as you get older, you care less and less and less and less about what people think. But in your 30s, in your 20s and 30s, it is such a mountain to climb to say you enjoy collecting Pokemon cards. You enjoy it. Because the first thing that happens is like, oh. Or you get this one. Oh, you collect Pokemon cards. What's that like? You get that smile steady on through the conversation. Like, oh, you like to, yeah, play with Barbies and play with G.I. Joes. That's not very mature. That's the response that so many of us get. And I feel bad. I wish people didn't feel bad. It didn't make you feel bad. It just, I don't know. You don't have to be... You don't have to love every hobby someone has. So someone says they like antiquing. You, you don't go, oh, why do, you want, why do you like old stuff? Someone says they like to travel. Most people say, oh yeah, me too. And then they say, well, I like to go to Disney World or I like to go to a resort and hang out on the beach for a week. So you know, that's not traveling, that's <laughs> resorting. I guess it's different. So, oh, look at me judging. So it's really hard when you're a collector and you get that judgment. You get that, oh, you didn't grow up. You're in your late 30s and you didn't grow up yet. Oh, so don't let people make you feel bad. Um, as an old guy, I'm probably, I'm not the oldest, but I'm probably up there in terms of people who are involved in the Pokemon collecting hobby. I only know that I'm not the oldest because I have some customers who, uh, who beat me out. So, <laughs> but don't, even if you're 30, even if you're 20, even if you're 16 and you like to do it, don't let people look down upon you. Don't, don't, don't care. Seriously. The people, they're likely they go home and they, you know, turn on their TV and watch Law and Order for two hours straight. You know, they're not, they're not actively engaged. They're just checking out when they fit. They sit in front of that 
screen or whatever they're doing, you know, swiping up. Um, I saw like a doodad where it just automatically swipes up. You, you don't even have to swipe. You just rub your thumb and it swipes for you. But anyway, so <clears throat> that's a different topic. Judging people for swiping up. Um, don't let people judge you. If you like collecting Pokemon, you know, have fun with it. Don't let it, you know, hurt your relationships or, you know, don't, you know, if someone doesn't want to talk Pokemon, we've all been in that conversation where uh, someone doesn't want to talk Pokemon, that you're shut down, just move on. It's, uh, it happens. I mean, I, I have a bunch of like old, they're like the friends you see at, at, the, at the birthdays where the people you see, you go to the party and you dance and but they'll talk about different things that they're interested in. Um, but I would never talk Pokemon with them. There's conversations like even Kai and I, we have like certain times where we don't talk Pokemon just because it's exclusionary sometimes, right? My wife is not as into it as, as we are and she doesn't want to be left out, which is fair. But a lot of times it's adults just like making you feel shitty for no reason and it, it really sucks don't do it i mean if someone has something that they like to do as long as it's not hurting anybody don't judge but yeah so i set up and this is kind of cool i set up a bespoke set of tables outside my house i set up my singles so i have you know the big card five box four row box card bcw boxes um filled with top loaders filled with like really nice cards i mean and the guy and the kids were like, it, it was such a fun thing to just have like a bespoke viewing of the stuff that you have on sale. To be able to engage with, yeah, look at this one. Oh, that one's nice. Who's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, you're looking for this VMAX? Let me look up. Here are the VMAXs we have. That is one of the more fun things you get to do. And not being a store owner, I, you don't get to do that very often. That's something you get to do maybe in your when you're doing it like a conference table, you get a little bit of that in the lull periods. Otherwise you're doing dealing, dealing, but to be just sitting there and, and like, yeah, it's cool, huh? Look at that. I mean, oh, you don't want that one, you want that? No problem. You know, and the kids, these two, two fellas, I mean, they must've been like seven and eight buddies. And the father was there and, you know, he looked down the little nose at, at, at the whole process, but he understood he was making his kids happy. And that's probably the big, big thing, but the kids were going through all the cards. They wanted V Maxes. They didn't want V Stars. They didn't want EXs. They didn't want full arts. They wanted V Maxes. V Maxes, the way to go. And they got some good V Maxes. One guy took three Vs though, but he he took some really good Vs. The Charizard V promo, excellent choice on his part. Um, what are the, Coridon V from the Pokemon Center ETB. Very good choice on his part. So yeah, it was it was really cool. And lately I've been mulling over this concept and I've been a bit inspired by Deep Pocket Monster and his card party to actually have, before the end of this year, before the end of the summer, or, or maybe to kick off the end of the summer, potentially something like a yard party. The idea that you invite some of the local collectors from the area and we don't have a lot of collectors here so it would be like 30 40 people get people to come and bring you know some of the cool pieces in their collections that, and have like show and tell have like trade night and i don't really want to vend i don't want vendors there um it'd be really cool you know obviously people can sell their cards and and trade their cards and buy cards, but I'm thinking about it. A nice, like a, a party where it's not all about the sell, not, not all about the sales and basically a socialization, like a trade night, ex, you know, except just fun. Uh, th throw in some different ideas, like the show and tell, like to be able to show off your collection. Do you know how many people collectors want to show off their collection to and no one will listen no one listens you talk to them about their collection anybody who's not a collector 
Oh, yeah. But if you're a collector and if someone starts to show me their cards, I'm like, digging it, right? That, a party where people are just showing off, show and tell. Um, we can invite kids and kids can see these collections too. Um, I wouldn't recommend people bring a bunch of stuff, but I'm, I'm really thinking about that. A yard party for Pokemon. Only Pokemon. Most of the trade nights are like magic and sports, but what do you guys think? You know, if, if I was to have a party, outdoors, lots of room, no big expenses related to the party, just sort of tables and chairs, music, people showing off their stuff, you know, people trading in the corner. I don't know if people would really play at all, but sure, people could play. But I'm really thinking about that. And I've started to draft up. I haven't announced it yet, but I'm starting to draft up and put a plan together to potentially have like a yard party. A chance for people like us, collectors like us, to get together and just like smile at each other. Just be like, that's cool. Very nice. Love it. That's all people want to hear. And uh, no naysayers. <laughs> Parents can come and you can look down upon all the adults who are loving their cards, but <laughs> you'd be outnumbered. So what do you guys think? Should I have a yard party? It would be tiny, super small, you know, 10 tables max. But it could be a lot of fun. Let me know. What would you want to do if you were at a, a Pokemon-centric party? What are the types of things that you'd want to see happen? Would you bring your collection and share? Would you be comfortable saying, hey, look, here is my collection of X and Y? I'm not saying X, Y. I'm like Z and N. <laughs> what do you guys think? Obsidian Flames. Now, Obsidian Flames scares me. Because people are calling it Darkness Ablaze 2.0. And Darkness Ablaze is not... It wasn't the hottest set in the world. Darkness Ablaze, you know, it had... the dark. It has the Charizard and have... I don't know. Is Charizard losing his power to really influence stuff? I mean... It's right before 151. Everybody is super psyched for 151. I'm very, very curious on what is the follow-up after 151. Are we going to see evolutions? Are we going to see, you know, an Umbreon EX, an Umbreon EX SAR? I mean, what's next? These guys, these guys can carry a set. Are we going to see shinies? You know, it's going to be fun.